Thank you, Madam President. Um, I came to the floor today to add my voice uh, to the voices that have spoken uh, on since 11 o'clock our time about the importance of opening this government and sending a strong signal that the United States Congress will not default on its debt, that we will pay our bills, we will honor the commitments that we've made not only to bondholders outside of our country, but to our own constituents who hold treasury bonds in their pension funds and their 401ks that use it to balance uh, their investments uh, in their businesses because they know that they can count on those notes to be paid. And until just a few days ago, it seemed like that would happen. And recently, in the last 48 hours, there is a real question as to if a small group of Republicans in the House understand how high this cliff is and how close we are to it. This problem is completely manufactured by a group of people that came here elected to office to do this exact thing, shut the government down at any expense. As a senator from uh, Virginia just said, burn the whole house down with children inside. They came here with that expressed purpose. And they are wrong and they are pushing this country to a terrible place. Now, Leader Reid has explained it. Senator Schumer from New York has explained it. Mark Warner, the senior senator from Virginia, who's one of the, literally one of the finest governors we've had in the last 50 years in America, and I say that res respectfully and honestly. We all know how, what a great governor he was, and he's now joined by another great governor from Virginia, Governor Kane. These men are senators, but they also understand that our governors now are at risk. Every governor, Republican and Democratic governor, and all of the state governments, and the thousands of cities and villages. Yesterday, we received a letter signed by the Governors Association, Democratic and Republican governors, saying, open the government. Do not let the government default. Why? Because in our system of government, which is the best in the world, it's not perfect, but it is the best in the world ever created by men and women. Frail human beings, we make a lot of mistakes. We made so many mistakes in the creation of our country, and we still continue to do it, but we are really trying to build a model of democracy, the best the earth has ever known. And there's a group of people in the House that decided that for some reason they don't like the democracy. I don't know what they want to go back to, but it's taken us 230 plus years to get here, I don't think anybody wants to go back to a place where the world had no democracy. There were elections. People won those elections. President Obama won his election. He did not carry my state, but he won his election, fair and square. And he campaigned on providing middle class families for the first time in America a way to purchase health insurance. Not a single payer system, not a government system, to purchase health insurance so they would not be one accident away from financial ruin. Shame on President Obama. Shame on him for suggesting something so radical. That moms and dads could go to sleep at night knowing that if an accident happened the next day, they would not have to take bankruptcy or choose between a child disfigured and a child that needed to go to college. Shame on President Obama. How dare him suggest such a thing. Now, if they don't like the bill, they can change the bill. We did not wake up one morning and declare this the law. The people of the United States declared this through us as their representatives. And if they don't like it, they can unelect us. Believe me, they'll have a great chance, because I'm up for re-election right now. They will be able to do that. But that is the way you do it. You don't threaten to shut down the government. Now, I'm going to run for re-election. I'm standing on this election as a supporter of the Affordable Care Act, not because it's a perfect law, but because it is much better, much better for all the people that I represent than what we had before, the wealthy people, the middle class people, and the poor people. 
We argued and fought in public, in meetings, for 40 years about how to do this. This wasn't a last-minute, behind-the-scenes deal that nobody read. Are they, have they lost their minds? We debated this for 40 years through every kind of president you could think of, conservative, liberal, different kinds of congresses. And I know we have to vote in 10 minutes, and I know other people are going to want to speak, but I'll just take a few more minutes to finish this up. Contrary to popular belief and what Fox News says, people here read the bill. For 40 years we read the bill. But we didn't have to read bills. All we had to look at was the face of kids dying of cancer that had no way to get cures. All we had to do was talk to people that came in our office every day and said, Senators, can't you do something? My insurance is going up. I can't find it. I want to get out of my job. I've worked for GE my whole life. I have a better idea. I'd like to create a job, but I can't leave because my wife has cancer. I don't need to read a bill. I listen to my constituents. That's what this is about. Then when they decided they couldn't get, you know, they're going to shut down the government because they can repeal this law, now they're deciding that, well, that didn't work so well and that's not making a lot of sense to people, so now we're going to negotiate on we don't know what, but we have to get something out of this. How dare them? How dare this group of radicals led by the senator from Texas how dare them take the greatest democracy on earth hostage? Who gives them that right? Do they think they're divine by God? They are not. None of us here. And God could run this world perfectly, but he doesn't run it. He's in heaven. And until then, we have to be as imperfect as we are, try to figure out his will through the democratic process. But they've decided that's not good enough. Well, I don't know anything on earth that's better. Maybe they can figure it out in the next 48 hours. But people have been thinking about that for six or seven or 8,000 years or longer. I don't think 48 hours is going to help them. So anyway, we're here today. And what I would like to say is that I agree with everything that my Senate colleagues have said. I would urge our colleagues to vote to open the government, to not hold the United States government and the world, and all the kids in the world, all the adults in the world, all the businesses in the world hostage over their antics. And more practically, in Louisiana, let me say that I've got 400,000 people that need us to fix flood insurance. They are really hurting. I have 200,000 people that live in Homa that have waited for a levy around their city for now 25 years and have been told by the core, yes, we'll build it, then they didn't, yes, we'll build it, then they didn't. I need to get on that. I've got permits in the Gulf of Mexico, and I see my friend here. I'm going to turn it over to her from California, and we have a little different view on this, Senator Boxer and I, but people in Louisiana like to drill for oil. We'd like to get our permits to do that, but because this ideological group has shut down the government, there are no permits being issued to produce the oil and gas necessary to keep our country strong. I could go on. So let me just say, let us reason together. We can find many things to negotiate about. I am open to many negotiations, as are the Democrats, but to threaten the core of this democracy, fought so long and so hard over decades by brave men and women, is really beyond the pale. And I yield the floor. Madam President.